Hello everyone and welcome to Network Playroom. In today's video, we'll look at Python sets. This will conclude our Python data type series and we'll move on to other topics after this video. Python sets are not actually covered in much detail in the DevNet Associate book, so I've searched on the web to understand it better myself and to provide a little more information on this video. So let's get started. A set in Python is yet another way of grouping items together. A set is unique, unordered, and unindexed. That means there are no duplicate items in a set, you cannot be sure in which order the items will appear, and you cannot access the items by referencing an index or a key. Now, common uses of sets include membership testing, removing duplicates from a sequence, and computing standard math operations on sets, such as intersection, union, difference, and symmetric difference. We'll look at a couple of quick examples later on in this video. Now, a set can have any number of items, and they may be of different types, such as integer, float, tuple, or string. However, a set cannot contain mutable elements like lists, sets, or dictionaries as its elements. Interestingly, a set itself is mutable, and you can add and remove items from them. Now, to create a set, you use the curly brackets as with dictionaries, but without the key value pairs. And you separate the items with commas as with other Python data types. So let's look at an example. I'll be very boring and unoriginal in my naming conventions in this video, so I'll just simply use A equals curly bracket and let's put some stuff here like devnet, we'll throw a number in there, and we'll use the colors example again. So blue, pink, and purple. All right, and then we close the curly bracket to create the set. There we go. And we can look at the information here and you see that the order has actually changed. As I mentioned, a set is unordered and unindexed, so we do not know in which order the items will appear in the set. Now, if we check the type of the variable we just created, you can see that it is a set. Now, you can also use the set method to create a set, so let's try that. We'll use another variable, b, and we do set, and let's include the same items here. DevNet 7, and then this tuple, which includes our colors. So blue, pink, and purple. Like that. Well, 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 look at that. We received an error. And I've done this purposely to demonstrate what happens if you don't use the method correctly. So the key information is in the last line here. Type error, set expected at most one argument, got three. So that is pretty self-explanatory. So we should have only used one argument, but instead we used three. So that is devnet seven, and then this tuple with which includes the colors. So it's not going to work. Now the set method takes a single optional parameter. So let's actually change and simplify our example a little bit and only include the colors. So I'll create a separate tuple call, called colors and assign those colors to this tuple. Again, blue, pink, and purple. Hope you're not getting tired of this. All right, here we go. Now, if we do the same thing, b equals set and colors, now that works. So if we check the type, you can see that this one is a set. And we can actually check the type for colors as well. So you can see it's a tuple. So now if we retrieve the information for b, 
you can see that it includes those items, but they are in different order. If you notice, it's pink, purple, and blue, and not blue, pink, purple. So we can check that here. Now, creating an empty set is a bit tricky, but perhaps you got a clue from our previous example. Now, empty curly brackets will make an empty dictionary in Python, but to make a set without any elements, we have to use the set function without any arguments. So let's look at that next. Again, I'll continue with my boring naming convention. So let's say C equals empty curly brackets. If we check the type, you can see that it's a dictionary. Now to create that empty set, we have to do D equals set. Now, if we check this type, you can see that it's a set. Next, let's talk about modifying sets. Since sets are unordered, indexing has no meaning. We can add a single item to a set with the add method and multiple items with the update method. Now to add an item to a set, let's use the add method. And we'll also use the variable that I just created. So we'll do d add and let's include some interface names here or just one ethernet zero slash zero. So if we pull that information, you see that it's a set with one element now. Now let's add multiple items to the set using the update method. So we'll do D update and I'll actually create a tuple here or put the elements inside a tuple. So ethernet zero slash 11 uh, Ethernet 0 slash 13 and Ethernet 0, 0 slash 17. I like odd numbers and especially prime numbers, so that's why I've used those interface numbers. All right. So let's pull the information for D again. So you can see that it now contains those four interfaces. Now notice again that I've put the interfaces inside brackets, which indicates that it is a tuple. And I've done this for a very specific reason, because you can only use certain types of arguments with these methods. However, I will not explore this further in this video because it is way beyond what we need to know right now. I'll leave a link in the description so you can read more about this if you're interested. So let's move on. Now there are two main ways in which you can remove an item from a set. You can use the discard or remove methods. The difference is very subtle and is only relevant if the item you want to remove is not present in the set. The discard method will leave the set unchanged and the remove method will raise an exception in such condition. And by the way, this is not a detail you are expected to know in the DevNet Associate exam. We are covering Python sets way beyond what is expected for that exam. So let's look at these methods. Now let's remove an item from the set using the remove method. So we'll do D remove and let's take out Ethernet zero slash 13, for example, like so. And let's look at the set again, and you see that it has been removed. Now let's check what happens if we try to remove an item that is not there. So let's say D remove, uh, let's say Ethernet zero slash one, for example, let's say we made a typo. So you see that this raises an exception or an error that item is not in the set. Now out of curiosity, let's do the same with the discard method. So D discard and we'll use the same ethernet zero slash one, which does not exist in the set. So you see that nothing happened. The set is still the same the discard method did not raise that exception. 
Now, you can also use the pop method, but that removes a random item on the set. And there's no way to determine which item will be popped. It is completely arbitrary. So let's actually try that. D pop. So it actually returns the value that it will remove, which is Ethernet 0 slash 11 in our case. So now if we look at this set again, it only has two items left, Ethernet 0 slash 17 and Ethernet 0 slash 0. Now to remove all items in a set, you can use the clear method. So we can do D clear and now our set should be empty. And indeed it is. So if we do set D, so it's still there, but it is empty. Next, let's discuss a special case of a set, which is called a frozen set. Frozen sets have the same characteristics as regular sets, but the items cannot be modified once assigned. Similarly to how tuples are immutable lists, frozen sets are immutable sets. Now to create a frozen set, you use the frozen set function. So let's create a frozen set F. So F equals frozen set. So let's look at what we have here. Frozen set type frozen set. Now, how can you use frozen sets? Well, a frozen set is often used as the source of keys in a dictionary. If you remember from the previous videos, keys in a dictionary have to be immutable. I actually don't have a great example to give you here, but I'll leave some links in the description so you can study this topic further if you like. Finally, let's talk about Python set operations. There are many ways to evaluate sets. Sets can be used to carry out mathematical operations like union, intersection difference, and symmetric difference. You can use the Python documentation to explore them in more detail. We'll just look at a couple of examples. So let's create a couple of new sets. So we'll say A equals, and we'll include a group of numbers, 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, and 42. Let me know in the comments if you know this combination of numbers and where it is from. And then we'll create another set called B and we'll use the Fibonacci sequence. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8. And notice here, I put two ones in there, but if you remember, there can't be duplicate items in a set, so one of them will actually be removed. We'll look at that now. So first A, and as you can see, the order has changed here as well, and then B. So now you see that there's just one, one. Also notice that these variables are different from the A and B that I used before. So there is a difference whether it's a lowercase character or a uppercase character. So let's look at the operations now. Now a union of two sets is a set of all elements from both sets. Union is performed using the pipe operator. So we can do A pipe B. And let's quickly think about what this is going to return. So it's going to combine these two methods, excuse me, sets, and return the elements in one set. So we should get one, two, three, four, five, eight, 15, 16, 23, and 42. Let's see. 
and that's exactly what we got, although the numbers are not in the same order that I listed them. Now, alternatively, you can use the union method. So you can do A union B, and it returns the same thing. Now, an intersection of two sets is a set of elements that are common in both sets. And an intersection is performed by using the AND operator. So if we do A and B, uh, let's think about what this will give us. So it's going to return only the items that are common in both sets. So if we look at this A and B we created before, you see that there's not much in common. Really the only value we have is 8. So in our case, it should return a single value, like so. Now, alternatively, you can use the intersection method. So you can do A intersection B, and it's going to return the same value. Actually, before we end the video, one more thing. You can iterate through the items in a set using a for loop. Now I know we haven't looked at Python loops yet, but this is a cool little example, so I'll include it in here. So we can do for number, num for short, in A, so in this set, for each number in this set, we want to print the number. Like so. So that's just a cool way to print all the items in this set. But we'll come back to those Python loops in the future in another video. I don't know when, uh, but we'll cover them at some point. So let's conclude this video here. Again, I'll leave some links in the description so you can go learn more about Python sets if you like. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.